Okay, so we have this list of numbers here, and what we need to do is determine which of them are rational and irrational, and then write these numbers in this table right here. So let's pick out the rational numbers first, right? So here we have 1 and 5 eighths, and that, of course, is a rational number. It's a mixed number, and any, any simple fraction or mixed number is rational. So we can put that over here in our rational column, 1 and 5 eighths. Okay, so I mean, here whenever I'm given a list, I cross them out to reduce the things I'm looking at here and lower my stress level on any question. Next, I move over to one fourth. That's also a rational number, right? One fourth is a simple fraction, so that's rational as well. Cross that out. Next, we I'll deal with this one: zero point three repeating. Sure, the threes goes on on forever here, right? But this is really just one third, and any decimal that goes on forever is rational as long as there's a repeating pattern. And here the pattern is clearly repeating, right? It's just three over and over and over again. So that is rational. I'll put that here. Point three, repeating as a note to myself that equals one third. Okay, two left to go. Here I have a negative decimal and it just goes two, four, seven. It's not really, of course, a uh, repeating pattern, but it terminates. In other words, it ends. As any time you're given any decimal, no matter how bizarre it looks, if it ends like this at some point, meaning that here 7 is the last decimal and there are no more after it, then it's automatically a rational number. So we'll put that here as well. And now we cross it out. The last number, the square root of 3, has no rational result. It's an irrational number. And in fact, whenever you're given a whole number like 3, or any whole number, and you take the square root of it and you try to approximate it, as a decimal, well, it has to be irrational, right? So that's kind of a nice, helpful hint. When you're given a square root of a number, if that number is a whole number, like 3, and you try and figure it out and realize it's some kind of decimal, in this case, it's between 1 and 2, because 1 squared is 1 and 2 squared is 4, if that happens, it's automatically irrational. So now we've grouped them all in the appropriate columns. Next, we need to approximate these as decimals. I'm going to start with the easiest one of all, 1 fourth. That's 0.25 exactly. And we're rounding to the nearest hundredth place, and that's our second digit right here. So we're done. Next, I'm going to deal with negative 1.247. Well, here we're rounding up the 4, right? We're rounding that up. That's our hundredths place. The 2 is in the tenths place. This is in the hundredths. The 7 is in the thousandths. So we use the thousandths place to estimate the hundredths place. Since our thousands place here is 7, we round the 4 up to a 5. In fact, if it was anything 5 or above, we would round this 4 up. If it's below 5, this, de this last digit right here, then we leave the hundredth place digit where it is. So here we just should rewrite it as negative 1.25, right? Round that 4 up to a 5. Here with this decimal, uh, 0.3 repeating, it's just going to be 0.33, right? And moving on, we have, I guess, two more to go. Let me move this down here, right? That'll be easier to deal with. Now, 1 and 5 eighths, we can round that as a decimal to the nearest hundredth. So you will probably have a calculator on a part like this. Uh, but even if you didn't, what I would do is rewrite this as an improper fraction. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 5 is 13. And then to write this as a decimal, I would solve 13 divided by 8. I would do the long division. But if you have a calculator, right, you can just set it up. 13 divided by 8, and it will give you your decimal, 1.625. So here, again, we use that 5 to round the 2 up to a 3. So we should get, again, 1.63. And just double check, yep, 1.63. Last, we have the square root of 3. And this would be a difficult process of estimating to the nearest hundredth. You have to constantly guess up and down between one and two. But on every calculator, there's usually some kind of function where it says second, right? And then you look for the button here. This button says x squared, and above it is a little square root symbol, so you press that. And most scientific calculators have, this is a graphing calculator you're seeing, but most scientific calculators have this function. And then you type in the number you're looking at, in this case three, and hit enter. And it gives you the approximation. Of course, this is irrational. Um, but here we get 1.73. Again, this 2 is below 5, so we leave the 3 where it is, and that's our decimal. So that's just 1.73. All right, hope that helped.